Let's start seated. So come into your cross leg position, or you can be in staff position with the legs out in front if you prefer. If you're cross legged, do your non habitual cross because creatures of habit, we always cross them the same way, the legs. So get the sitting bones slightly behind you, the core supporting your spine, the shoulders back and down, and hips and shoulders lined up. Take a moment, just feeling your body lengthening up through the crown. Relax the shoulders, keep them away from your ears, and just breathe a moment, letting the belly move as you inhale, and sink back in as you exhale, diaphragm just freely moving. And take a moment as you do that to focus inward. And then cup your hands around your knees, pull your ribs back, round slightly forward and bring your forehead toward the floor. And then we'll just circle. So bringing your head over to the side, lifting your heart as you bring your head to the back, over to the other side and forward. And just circle around a few times, feeling the ribs open as you go to the side, feeling that spine going all the way around. Keep breathing with it, just exhaling to the front, inhaling to the back, and noticing how your body is moving today. And then the next time you're forward, just pause at the center and reverse your circles. And again, over to the side, lift your heart at the back, and exhale back around to the front. And feel the ribs opening, feel the spine, let it keep stretching out through the crown all the way around the circuit. Feel your hips just gently warming up. And the next time you're forward, just pause there. And on an inhalation, come back upright. And then switch your legs around because we like to balance things out. And we're gonna pull the ribs back and just a gentle forward bend. And then inhaling, lift your heart, drop your shoulders, look slightly up, but don't lift your chin too high. Remember, keep stretching your neck. And just let your spine go through its whole forward bend, backward bend motion. And then inhale back upright. And again, just notice how your body is aligned. Bring one hand to the side, the other arm out, palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Slide into your side stretch. Keep both sitting bones, both hips down. Arm comes along next to your ear and you reach your head and hands away from that opposite hip. Take a moment and breathe. Deepen if you like by bending your elbows or keep sliding your hand away. Take a moment, just lengthening and breathing, opening those ribs. Inhale back upright, exhale that arm down. Again, switch your legs so that we can go to the other side. Arm out, palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder, slide over on the other direction. And again, arm is by your ear, both sitting bones, hips down. And that hand slides away as far as it wants to go. Or you can bend the elbow and deepen, but keep the sitting bone on the opposite side still down. Get those ribs stretching, head and hand reaching away, just opening through the shoulder. And inhale back up, releasing into your seated position. Then look at your legs, see which one is on front or on top. It doesn't really matter. And take the opposite hand to that knee. Other arm out, palm toward the floor, shoulders down, crown high, and we'll twist. So follow that hand around behind you as far as it wants to go. And then bring it to the floor close to your body. Stretch from the sitting bones up. Let this back hip move a little off the floor as you turn deeper into the twist. So hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turning deepening your twist, not just turning your neck. Take a breath or two, relaxing, deepening. And then inhale, 
bringing the arm back to shoulder level and exhale around to the center, releasing back to your seated position. And of course, we're going to twist the other way, so just switch those legs around. Take a moment and breathe, lengthening up, hand to the opposite knee. Arm at shoulder level, shoulders and shoulder blades, sitting bones down, and then exhale, hand or circling to the back. Bring it down to the floor near your body. Lift that hip you're moving away from slightly as you turn deeper into the twist. Hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turning, not just your neck. And again, as you breathe and deepen into your twist, just allow it to happen. Don't force it. And then hand back at shoulder level behind you, following it back to the center and gently into your seated position. Take a moment and lengthen up through the crown. Hands to your sides. Bring the arms out over your shoulders. Stretch it up and pivot. Reach forward, arms by your ears. Just again, feel that whole back of your body stretch. Inhale, straight back up. Keep the shoulders down. Turn the palms out and release. Lifting your knees and bringing the legs out into staff position. Straight out in front of you. And press out through your heels, pull the toes back. Let the backs of the legs go down toward the floor as much as they would like. Kneecap pulling up toward your thighs and <clears throat> tighten your thighs just slightly so those legs give you a nice stretch. Again, core is active, shoulders over your hips, crown reaching toward the ceiling. We're going to warm up the hips a little more. So bring your foot up to your opposite thigh as high as it wants to go. It can be anywhere along the leg that works for you. And let the knee come down toward the floor. Just going to work that hip a little bit. <clears throat> so if that's tight, put some padding under your back of your body to raise those sitting bones a little bit. Or bring your leg in front over to the side. But keep the knee and toes up. And you can add weight from your hand, but don't press to get that knee coming down further toward the floor as much or as little as it wants. Remember, personal practice always. Let your body do what's right for your body today. And then bring your foot and knee into your hands or wrap your arms around your leg and pull it in. Remember, keep your spine straight so don't run those shoulders forward, keep them back and down. And just move your legs side to side getting that outside of your hip, warming up a little more hip rotator. And as that gets a little bit easier to do, you can move the leg higher or closer if you want and let it work a little harder, but don't force anything. Take a breath, tension out. And then when you're ready to release, just bring that leg back out to the center, back into staff position. Take a moment doing your yoga observation, noticing the difference on those two sides. Keep pushing out through the heels, pulling the toes back on both feet, and get ready to yeah, balance the body with the other foot coming up. So as high toward the thighs it wants to go, knee coming down toward the floor on this side, just kind of notice one side may be tighter than the other. That's not unusual. Just let it work in its own way. Knee and toes up on the front leg, even if you move it over to the side, but keep the toes and knee up. And again, keep that leg as activated as you can so the back of the knee is stretching while this hip is relaxing. And again, you can add weight from your hand, no pressure. We don't want to overdo it because remember when you push, your muscles resist and then they don't stretch as effectively and you get less movement in your body. Take a breath, keep the core active, keep the spine straight, keep the crown reaching up. And oh yeah, don't forget to breathe. And then bringing your hands around your knee and foot or pulling your arms around your leg and pulling it in. Work that leg side to side, hip working a little through that outside of the hip. And as you do that, stay there if that's good enough or bring it a little higher or closer if you like it to be a little bit more intense, but remember, never overdo anything. Take a breath, tension out. 
And again, as you relax, just bring both legs back into staff and press out through your heels. Feel your body, check your alignment, and don't forget to relax your shoulders. Bring your feet together and pull the heels in close to your body with those knees coming out into butterfly position. So take a moment there, just let the inner thighs release a little bit. Keep the core active, keep the spine nice and straight, shoulders relaxing down. Just let those knees come over down and toward the floor as far as they want for your body. You can hold the toes, you can hold the big toes with your index and middle fingers wrapped around, or you can just hold your ankles. And it doesn't matter how close in those heels come, it's just whatever's working for your body today. And then bring your hands to the back one at a time right under your shoulders. Gentle pressure into your fingers or palms, whatever works for you, and lift your heart a little bit more. And as that activates that inner area of your abdominal area, just notice maybe those thigh muscles releasing a little bit, kind of angle the bottoms of your feet toward the ceiling, and that helps to align things for that hip opening and release through your thighs. Take a breath, lift your heart, drop your shoulders, shoulder blades toward the sitting bones and reach the crown toward the ceiling. Feel that whole body opening a little bit more in your butterfly. Exhale any tension. Let it just maximize or minimize whatever's working for you. And then releasing your hands back to the center, slide your feet out a little bit further Take your hands under your legs and then lean slightly forward back, still straight. Put your hands on the bottom of your, on the tops of your feet, palms on the tops of your feet, and let the knees come down toward the floor again. So push the sitting bones slightly further back, pivot maybe a little bit more through that hip joint as you bring your chest toward your feet and stretch the crown up away from your sitting bones toward the ceiling. So lengthening your spine, just exhale, pivot a little deeper when it works for you. And just keep allowing your body to move a little further into the position whenever you're ready, but don't force it. If you're really flexible, you can get your chest down close to your feet or maybe even on your feet, but it's not needed. And then leading with your head, come on back up, releasing your arms, lift your knees, bring your legs back out into staff position, heels out, toes up, feel what's going on through the hips just a little bit more. And oh, let's do another seated posture. So these are the multitasking watching TV positions that you can do seated, seated on the floor. Sitting bones behind you, shoulders back and down, we're going to take one foot up as close toward that thigh crease as you can, knee coming down toward the floor. And this is uh, sometimes called half lotus. And the more your knee comes down, the easier it'll be to get into full lotus. So if you want to try that, just let the knee keep coming down. Bend your other knee, slide this one in, let the knee drop down sitting a little bit forward of your sitting bones. And then if you want to, you can pick up the foot <clears throat> and put it up on the opposite thigh into a full lotus position. Some people love this, some people don't. I am one that doesn't. So if you don't, feel free just to stay in that half lotus position, put the foot down or extend it out. Take a breath. <clears throat> and relax wherever you are. And then if you've got your foot up in full lotus, you can bring it back out and release the other foot as well, back into staff position. So in yoga, yes, we always balance the body and try it on the other side. Some people find one side works easier than the other. So let's do that. Again, opposite foot to the upper thigh, as high as it will go. Knee coming down toward the floor, let it go, 
And then push the sitting bones further back as you bend the other knee and bring it in. And if you want, pick up that leg and put the foot on the opposite thigh again so that both those legs are kind of cross, the knees coming down toward the floor. They may or may not make it both to the floor. It depends on how open your hips are and how flexible your knees are. So do what's right for you. If that foot coming up doesn't work, just stay in the half lotus with the other foot just in front. And again, you can extend that leg fully out. And of course, you can release back into staff position. So on your own, you'll want to hold those positions longer because the longer you hold them, the more the muscles will release and go into the positions. So just feel free to do what's right for your body on your own time. We'll do one more seated posture for the hips. So bring your foot to the right foot to the inner left thigh and let the knee come out toward the side. So this one's called perfect posture because when you're in a guru class and they make you sit on the floor for a really, really long time, this is a really good one to practice using. So we're gonna take the opposite foot and bring that foot into the triangle of the other leg. And as you do that, you'll feel your body kind of rotates a little bit forward with those sitting bones going a little further behind you. And your spine just naturally keeps straight and stretching up if you keep that core activated. And this is less intense than your yoga lotus position, but it also gives you a little bit more in the hip opening, but with a little bit easier work through the hips and legs. So just allow yourself to be wherever you are. Exhaling tension. And of course, we're going to Practice this perfect posture on the other side. So once more, bring your legs out into staff position. Take a breath there, exhaling any stress or strain. Sitting bones behind you, everything even, core active, shoulders back and down, and the foot comes up to that opposite leg. So at the foot on the inner thigh, or as high as it'll go, you'll have a nice little triangle there for your other foot, bring it up. And just allow the body to kind of pivot a little bit forward as you do that, keeping the spine stretching out and straight, shoulders back and down always. And again, just notice your body exhaling any stress or tension and feel that perfect posture, core activated, spine stretching open and shoulders, of course, relaxing toward the floor. And then once more, release the legs back into staff position. Take a moment, feeling your body, keeping that core active, spine stretching up. And let's bring the right foot to the inner thigh and the left heel back near your hip, stretching up. And bring your hands to your sides. Arms out, palms toward the ceiling, and hands above your shoulders. We're gonna do a forward pivot in this position. So go ahead and exhale, hands down to your shoulders. Inhale, stretch it up. Keep the shoulders, shoulder blades toward your waist always. Head reaching toward the ceiling, exhale down. Inhale and stretch, pivot forward, exhaling, chest coming down. This back hip will lift a little bit. Bring your hands along your ears and just stretch to the front, or you can put them on the floor if that feels better for you. Take a moment and stretch the spine long. Exhale, tension. <clears throat> and then bring your arms by your ears, inhaling, pivoting back up, palms out, exhaling to the floor. And then lifting your knee, bring the legs back into staff position. Take a moment once more, noticing what is responding in your body as we get ready to balance, yeah, and pivot with the other legs, the other way. So foot to the inner thigh, heel coming back near your hip, but not under it. And again, stretch and straighten. Hands at your side, palms out, palms toward the ceiling, and hands above your shoulders. 
Shoulder, shoulder blades towards your waist, arms by your ears, pivot at your hips, exhale, chin and chest leading as you come forward as far as feels good for you. Hands to the floor if you want, you can pivot further. Remember, personal practice, whatever works for your body. Exhale, stretch through the fingertips and the head. And then arms by your ears, inhaling, pivot back up, shoulders are down, palms out, and to the floor. Again, lifting your knees and bringing your legs back into staff pose. Take a moment there, just feeling your body, lengthening up, shoulders and shoulder blades down, push out through those heels and keep that core supporting your spine. Exhale any tension. And then again, bringing your legs out to the sides. Let's do a wide leg version. So get those sitting bones further behind you. Knees up toward the ceiling. <clears throat> Toes also reaching up and pulling back. Push out through the heels. Feel your core supporting your spine. Shoulders and shoulder blades down. Hands coming again to shoulder level. Palms toward the ceiling. Hands above your shoulders. Exhale, sink into your sitting bones, hands down to your shoulders. Sitting bones all the way up through the crown, up through the fingertips, stretch it up through. Oh, let's do one more exhaling release. And then as we inhale, bring your arms right next to your ears, fingertips and head toward the ceiling. Push those sitting bones behind you, lead with your chest. Keep your arms by your ears and pivot into that forward position as far as your body likes to go. If you're really flexible, you'll go further. Just allow it to happen. Push the sitting bones even further back. You'll pivot a little bit more. Relax through the inner thighs as you go. You can drop your hands to your feet or put them on the floor in front of you. And keep pivoting as you release through that inner thigh area. But keep your spine as straight as you can, chest pulling down to the floor. So we're not tucking the chin. We're not rounding the back. We're just letting the body come as far forward as it wants to. Take a breath. Just deepen as you exhale. And then releasing your arms back next to your ears. Leave with your fingertips back up. Shoulder, shoulder blades where? Yeah, toward your waist. Turn the palms out, down to shoulder level. And then release to the floor. Take a moment in that wide-legged position just to feel your body and let things release wherever they may feel tight. And we'll do another one. And going to the side, get a little more side opening on this one. So once more, hands at your sides, palms out, palms toward the ceiling, and hands above your shoulders. Exhale, sink down, hands to your shoulders. Inhale, stretch up. And exhaling down, just feel those sitting bones and stretch from them out through your fingers and head. Exhale, turn to the side, and again, let your hands come to your shoulders. Stretch way, way up again on the inhalation, facing that foot you've turned toward, bring your chest down toward the knee. And again, keep the arms by your ears reaching out, push the sitting bone behind you back a little more. And then put your hand on the foot or the leg or the floor. And just keep pushing the heels out, pulling the toes back. Kneecap toward your thigh, tightening the front of your thigh so the backs of those legs still go down toward the floor. And your chest comes toward your leg as well. Stretch out through your spine, get it really nice and open, stretching straight. And then we're going to go into a twist. So bring your Top hand back behind you and look to the front, twisting your body so hips, ribs, and shoulder are facing the front. And then bring the arm up and over next to your ear toward your toe. You can bring the elbow inside your knee and leverage deeper into that twist if you love it. And you can go as far toward looking up toward the ceiling in your twist as your spine wants to go as it twists. So remember, keep the head and sitting bones reaching away from each other. This back sitting bone will come up a little bit as you reach toward that side. Take a breath, head toward the toes, and toes pulling back. 
And then the hand that's over your ear, bring it back up, lead with it, coming back to your seated position. Stretch those arms out, facing the front and release. Feel your body a little bit more open through the sides and the spine. And of course, we'll balance doing that the other way. Arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Keep those shoulders, shoulder blades down. Exhale, sink into the sitting bones, hands to your shoulders. Inhale and stretch. And exhale and sink. Inhale, give yourself a good stretch. Exhale and turn toward that other foot, hands down to your shoulders. Stretch it up again. And as you read and exhale, we'll reach for that opposite foot. Bring your hands to your foot or the floor or your leg, wherever you'd like to go. Keep that spine straight, chest moving toward your legs. You can keep the arms by your ears if you prefer. This back hip, remember, can come up a little bit further if it needs to as you reach head toward the toes, toes pulling back. Leg is straight along the floor as you can. Take a moment and breathe. Exhale and deepen. And again, bring the hand that's on top out to the side, palm toward the ceiling, arm up and over next to your ear as you look toward the front. And twist your body, hips, ribs, and shoulder turning. So remember, this hip will be up a little bit to facilitate that twist. You can stay there, reaching your hand along the or arm along the ear, hand toward your toes. Or you can bring the elbow inside the knee, leveraging a little deeper into the twist if you're a twist lover. Take a breath, deepen and stretch as you inhale, feeling that whole body moving into your twist to the front or further toward the ceiling if you love it. And then leading with that hand in the air, pull your body back up, straightening it out, arms to the sides, and release it. Bend your knees, bring the legs in, and back into staff position. And then shifting them to the end of the mat, activating your core. Use your core for support to slowly blow all the way down. As you get there, just take a moment, shoulders down, bring your hands out to T position, palms up or down, we'll just do one little twist before our relaxation. Sitting bones toward your heels, heels up next to your sitting bones, knees above your hips, feet off the floor. Keep the knees next to each other, or you can cross one over and then roll to that opposite side. Turn your head toward the other arm, keep the shoulders, shoulder blades down, hands either palms up or down, whatever facilitates that for you. Knee coming toward the floor for that lower back twist, and head turning toward the arm behind you for the neck area twist. And just keeping the shoulders down works that middle back into the twist as well. Deepen only as far as your body naturally wants to go, exhaling and releasing any stress or tension. And of course, you hold these longer on your own as always. But for now, heels toward your hips, rolling onto your back, knees again above your hips. Feet to the floor to straighten out if you need to, and we'll go the other direction. Knees over your hips, cross the leg the opposite way if you're doing the knee crossed over, and once again, roll the hips over as you turn your head toward the opposite arm. Shoulders down, shoulder blades to the mat, and just deepen as much as your middle back wants to twist. Head turning for your neck area twist only as far as your personal practice goes. And knee coming toward the floor again, however much your lower back likes to twist. Exhale. Just relax. Deepen your twist at your own pace when it's ready. And of course, hold these a lot longer on your own. But for now, we need a time for our final relaxation. So once more, bring your heels toward your hips. Roll onto your back. If your legs were crossed, uncross, and slide the legs out into corpse position. With your hands, palms up, 
away from your hips at your sides. Shoulders, shoulder blades down, and those toes toward each other and release, just letting that whole hip and leg area relax. Lots of work there today. Feel your spine, let it release any stress or tension and straighten out through the crown. And then just exhale. Let it relax completely into its natural position. Head side to side, let the neck release, shoulders down, keeping that heart nice and open. And as you exhale, just let your body sink, growing heavier with each exhalation. <clears throat> Deepen into that earthbound embrace and let your body go. As your body softens and sinks, just allow your mind to soften and soar, letting those thoughts release without awareness. No need to remember the past or anticipate the future. The content of the thoughts are not important. It's the job of your mind to keep producing them, but it's your choice whether you pay attention. Just let them go unnoticed at this moment, floating away like your breath. Your body sinking, your breath free, your mind floating, and your awareness, just let it turn inward, focusing on the peace within. Deepen into that peace, let your whole body and your mind fill with peace. And if that relaxation feels really good today, just keep relaxing as long as you can. If, however, it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness with your breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin stretching gently, however feels good for you this time. Exhaling, stretching, inhaling, lengthening, and of course, when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, bring your sitting bones toward your heels, back gently down, bring your heels toward your hips, and your knees up toward your heart, wrap your arms around, however it feels right for you, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug, let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today, and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, bring your head and feet to the floor, roll to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you. Thanks for joining me.